1968 GT500 Tribute. I bought this car in 2018 for my 50th birthday, present to myself. Why a classic car for your 50th birthday? I have always had, you know, the fastback thing, a little bit with the Eleanor, a little bit with the bullet car. Those kind of, those cars came out to me. And uh, so when I went classic, I wanted to do rest of my, because I wanted all the creature comforts that I had. But I always liked this style, I like the fastback 67, 68 style. When you bought the car, what engine did it come with at that time? Well, the car originally came with a 302. Uh, when we did, the, well, they did all the rest of the money. 2013, 2014, I think the original owner did a myriad of things, many, many things to the car. Um, they put a Dart Racing 351 Windsor block and stroked it to 427 to have that 427 number, I think was what it was all about. Um, and that was the engine it had. But it was carbureted. Um, the transmission wasn't the best match for it. And I think the car... I don't think it was ever really dialed in. I think the guy bought it to just really show the car. I got it uh, in 2018 after being built in 2013, 2014. Four years, I had 800 miles on it. Wow. Um, so I car was not driven. So it had those problems going on moving forward. So um, I wanted the 427. I think it was a hallmark, so I stayed with the 427. But we, like I said, pulled it apart, balanced and boosted it, make sure everything was perfect. Um, and... You know, I can't speak well enough about Prestige Motorsports, the guys in North Carolina that originally built it. It always had an overheating problem. I think it was probably built for that weather. It just never handled the humidity and heat down here very well. Uh, so I kind of started trying to find a way to solve that problem. So I decided uh, to send it back to the original builder. Um, and when it was there, uh, I decided, you know, <laughs> I don't do good at leaving things alone. So I pretty much mod I had the car engine taken out completely, balanced and blueprinted. We upgraded the intake system. We upgraded the, the exhaust systems. Uh, we did interior. We did paint. Uh, I don't think there's anything we didn't touch. Uh, and, and I just made it exactly the way I wanted it. I said, look, I just want it back the way it was when I got it, when I first purchased it. And then I have the overheating problem. We talked about Wizard Cooling, which is another amazing company in New York uh, with uh, a special uh, spall uh, brushless fans. So they're not just on off, they, they, they change speeds and have massive thrust. I went from 1300 CFM total for the car, which is way too low, uh, to over 3600 if I need it. And it just kind of spools up. So that was all intriguing to me and everything. So we started there, we're going to do everything the same, put the radiator in, and that would solve all my problems, which it would have. But then, you know, you're bored, you go on their website, and I see this Weber 8 stack. I actually saw a Kindega design also touting how great it was. So I said, you know, I, I want to do that. I want to do that. I said, oh, Mark's like, that's a great idea. We're all thinking about that. We don't want to, I don't want to push anybody kind of a certain way. And, uh, and I was like, no, I love it. And he goes, and you have a height clearance issue. That would just solve all the problems. And we move forward with that. So we did that. And so, of course, we got to go to multi-port fuel injection. But there's so many benefits to that as well. So I was like, okay, good. Let's do it. And it kind of went spalling up from there. I mean, down, I mean, I saw dipsticks. I want that dipstick from my car. <laughs> that's how crazy I kind of got with it. And uh, so I, I really just, I just wanted it all done. They put it on the dyno. Um, what do we got? We are plus 600 and plus 550 torque. I want to say just a little bit over 603 and maybe 554 or something like that. Nice. Uh, yeah, so it's real solid, which was, I, I was not going for it. And uh, part of the thing I liked about the multi-port fuel injection and the tuning ability with it um, was that it could be dialed down to drive very comfortably and also go like a bat out of hell when you want it. Right. And that's the way it's set up for me. And it, it, it is such a better car, uh, and I didn't think it could be, better than when the day I got it. Wow. So, yeah, they've, like I said, I can't, think, uh, can't say anything better about those guys. And, uh, you know, they worked on it straight. They keep you up to date with what's going on. They are, you know, I get report, you know, weekly reports and, you know, kind of things that you can pay as you go, which I really like. It wasn't just slam, bam, thank right. you, or we need this deposit. It's very simple, very, you know. Reliable. Yeah, really, really straightforward and honest and, and open about everything that was going on with the car. Anything they found, they kind of reported to me, and we, we talked about it, made discussions about it. Again, electrical work that was done on this car in the meantime was horrific. And they sent me pictures of it, made it very clear everything was going on, and, and we kind of stepped as we went. As a side note, uh, Prestige Motorsports was nominated in 2023 as one of the engine, uh, best engine builds of the year. Uh, we made the top 10 and there was a selection. Thing. I didn't get the number one spot, but I, they were nominated and I was really proud of that. And it just goes to the work that they do. Now, what suspension did you go with? The suspension on this car, surprisingly, was very, very good, even but for back then. A Heights independent rear suspension system and that, it had, that it came with when I bought it. 
So there was really nowhere to go beyond that. That's the best of the best. Today is still the best of the best. But I had issues with uh, pulling one way or that kind of thing or vibrations at speed and things like that. So what they did was they, you know, they, they, they did all the geometry work of the car and set everything up the way it's supposed to be set up. So it drives straight, drives reliable, it doesn't shake, it doesn't have stuff. And that was the biggest part of, of the gotcha. uh, suspension. All right, so let's talk about wheels. What do you got? I have a Shelby American Racing DN427s. They are 18s all the way around, uh, sevens in the front, nine in the back. Uh, tires are, uh, uh, what do I got, 275, 40, um, 18s and 225 40 18s on the front that was one of the things that when i said you know that's what i wanted that's i always wanted those rims for the car i always thought was the best look for for this car so there, there's a, a line you kind of go when you build a tribute car which can be a clone which is very much exactly you're kind of mimicking exactly what it was in 68. Right. i didn't want to pretend that this is not a real gt500 uh, so i wanted to do what is called a pro touring resto mod so it handles well it goes fast but it's, it's, everything's new inside and everything else. The outside, I wanted to look pretty close, but you can't get those Shelby rims with the sizes that I wanted. Uh, so we went with these, and these are Hillebrand. They're very much like, uh, sorry, they look like the Hillebrands, and they are uh, like we see on the Cobras. And talk to me about the stance. The stance is mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the stance is, we're lowered here obviously quite a bit. Probably, I think you have a Shelby typically goes standard at the back and then maybe one and a half drop on the front, inch drop on the front. I think we are about uh, two and two and a half all the way around. So it's not too much more, but it's, it's quite a bit. Yeah. We sag a little bit there. I had, of course, uh, when we did the car, the body work on the car, and I forgot that I have to roll the fenders, and I, I God, I scared myself to death. Like, Patricio, one of your, one of your right. guys, noticed it. It was pulled out on the, on the right side. I saw that you took it to some I guy, to the fender doctor or something. The fender guy, guy yeah. is, is, he's well known. And he did a really amazing job, and now everything clears the way it should. It's the only way I can get these size tires on it, because uh, it's stock. It's the, 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 there's no flaring on it. There's no tubbing on it. Uh, the rear suspension says it kind of goes up and down less than a car that would go like this, so that it actually gave a little bit room to do the 275s with just rolling. Uh, if, you have a, if you have a floating axle, you wouldn't be able to do that. Gotcha. Yeah. And talk to me about the color. Okay, so when I got the car, I thought I had Alcapulco Blue, and with maybe some tints to touch it, or, you know, they did a two-step on it, two-stage, sorry, on it. And I thought maybe that's why it looked a little different than some of the other cars that you've seen, the Acapulco Blue cars that we've seen. Uh, turns out the, car, the paint of the color was not anything to do, not even close to what Acapulco Blue is supposed to be. This color is going back to start at the base of Acapulco Blue. And the great people, I mean, the really, really great people at Carolina Speed and Metal, he sent me swatches. And we kind of went there. He goes, this is the Acapulco Blue with a little more blue. This is with a little bit more metal. This is with adding this. We kind of played with it a little bit. And this color just popped. I mean, it really, really popped. It's so much more than anything he sent me. Um, and I was almost a little scared because you never know when, when you, you see it in a, in a swatch this big, you know, what it's right. going to look like on the car. Exactly. And they sent me pictures of it. You can go on their website and look at it, and their Facebook page and look at it. And um, until you're standing in front of it, I don't know if you, even the camera will get the, the color, but. When I saw it, I was floored. I was like, that's it. That's exactly what I wanted. When we get in the daylight, you can see it. Uh, hopefully, you see how, how much sparkle it yeah, has. and everything. beautiful else. color. What did you do on the interior? Interior. So the guy who originally built this car was in love with Carroll Shelby, apparently. I mean, everything on this car was signature Carroll Shelby, which meant that the gauges had his signature on it. The seats, every headrest had a signature on it. And the back had a signature on it. And the armrest had a signature. The floor mats had a signature. It was like kind of a little bit of overkill. Uh, so I just went in and went on to TMI, talked to them. I said, you know, I want everything, uh, except for a few things that I went with Mustangs to Fear, but mostly everything from TMI, from the seats. The console is Mustangs to Fear, uh, another great company. Yeah, and and cool. now these seats, the detail on them is super nice. Right. So this particular look with the rivets is harkens back to like the GT40. And that's kind of a look that I like, you know, getting back to the 60s and kind of going that way rather than going... Full rest of mine, which is like really more of a really bucketed seat. And okay, so the, the door panels are from TMI. Uh, we modified them slightly, you know, obviously for the speaker outlets. And then they were kind of plain at the bottom. You can kind of see they have a, a like a leather bottom piece, and it kind of terminated with that. And it seemed like it was missing something. 
So we took the, the panels off, the original panels off uh, uh, the deluxe interior, port de deluxe interior doors mm -hmm. and add them. That's that venting you see on the bottom. A radio system. So the first thought was to get a touchscreen system that had a reverse camera in it so I could have something very easy to see and not the stress about backing up. And then we kind of went up from there with the uh, Apple CarPlay system and everything else. What, what do you have in that exhaust? Because this thing sounds mean. All the way? All the way around. Uh, it's, called a vi it's a company called Vibrant, supplied the actual tubing. So they did cutouts on there. So the, the cutouts, how do, you, how do you control the cutouts? There's a remote control switch that I have. It's like a keychain thing, uh -huh. like, a, like an alarm switch. So now let's talk about transmission. What do you got in there? I have a Tremec TKO 600 which is the same as a 500, except it has a lower gear ratio for the, the first gear, which is supposed to help you on takeoff. They did linkage. I think they did a short throw shifter on it because it's, it just feels so nice. Now. It's almost feel like a gated feel now. And brakes. Uh, they're Will Woods, six piston, four piston. Yeah. How do you feel when you're driving this thing? The drive of this car is inexpensive. I, I can go back to the joy I had when I was, you know, 18 and in 1987 or so. Yeah. Every chance I get, I try to hit the road with it and really and really enjoy it. All right, so that's Tony, and he's taking off. Thank you, Tony. Have a good one. And there goes Tony. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time.